Hey guys, what is the best video card for video editors in 2023 and beyond? That was a question that I asked myself when evaluating a bunch of video cards to be used in my video editing rig. Now don't get me wrong, if you want to spend a fortune and drop Benjamins on the latest and greatest graphics card, you're going to get the very best video card. That's the RTX 4090 for both video editing and gaming. But most video editors don't really need all that much and don't really game that much either. Unless if you're out of video editing work, then you'll probably want to make sure your graphics cards you can game with. So in today's video, we are going to go over my top picks for the best video cards for video editors in 2023 and beyond. We will go over both the pricier top end and also the cheaper budget versions. And I'll share my reasons for each. Number one on the list is the RTX 4080, the best graphics card for video editors if you don't care about Benjamins. The RTX 4080 is the little brother to the RTX 4090, the best graphics card on the planet right now. And it's with out a question that the 4000 series of NVIDIA are the fastest graphics card for video editing and the RTX 4080 is no exception. This is a video rendering beast. With 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory running on a 25-bit bus at 22.4 Gbps, you're essentially getting 736 GB per second of effective memory bandwidth. This means that this video card will slay anything you throw at it, even 8K video. On top of that, this card will pretty much handle any AAA game you throw at it. So you're really killing two birds with one stone. So if you're a video editor that just wants to future-proof yourself for many years to come, this is the card to get. Now I want to say that this card is not without its cons though. It's super expensive, difficult to find stock, and you need a super powerful PC to take advantage of it along with a very powerful power supply. Also, I just don't like how bulky this card is, and for a lot of people, you may need to upgrade your case to fit the card. Now, that's a lot of accommodation for just a graphics card, but if you really want the best card, and if you're a hardcore gamer and video editor, it's perfect for those people that want a versatile gaming and video editing PC all in one. But I will say that it's pretty much overkill for your standard video editor. I would only pick this if you're a triple A gamer who wants to do video editing and you don't care about the Benjamins. All right, number two on the list, we will swing the other way and go with the best budget graphics card for video editors. And that's without a question in my eyes is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super. I love this card. It's just so affordable, such a good performer, and you can even play AAA games at lower resolutions. It boasts six gigabytes of VRAM memory and only requires a very minimal power supply. It's also small enough to fit in smaller PC cases. And the best part of it in my eyes is the price. It just comes at such a budget friendly price that everyone can afford it. Like if you check Amazon, you can take a look at the price of the card right now. Now, there are downsides to this card. Video export speeds are much slower than faster GeForce cards. But then again, this card is also half the price. With only six gigabytes of video RAM on board, it will struggle to edit 8K videos and higher frame rate 4K footage. It's also a much older card, so you're not really gonna be future-proofing yourself. But all in all, this is still the perfect video card for beginners and those on a budget. Keep in mind that you can always upgrade your video card as you get better. And I would say that for the vast majority of newer video editors, this card is enough. Like if you're just starting out using Filmora, for example, and making simple YouTube videos, this is pretty much all you need. You don't need to spend unnecessary dollars on things you don't really need. No one really edits 8K footage right now and 4K footage, although slower, still works on this card. This card is also small enough that it will fit in just about everyone's PC case. So you can just grab one, pop it in and go. All right, number three, let's talk about the best graphics card for Mac users. I usually don't really recommend AMD graphics card for PC video editing. They are just considerably slower than equally priced NVIDIA counterparts. That may change with the newer Radeon 7900 series, but if you're a Mac user, you're pretty much limited to Radeon graphics card. And you have to be very careful because not all external graphics cards are supported by Mac OS yet. But let's say you're rocking a 2019 Mac Pro. If you've installed like Mac OS Big Sur 11.4 or later, in my eyes, the best card to get right now is the RX 6800 XT. This Radeon card is the little brother of the 6900 XT, but also at a much more reduced price point. It comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which means it will handle pretty much anything you throw at it, including 4K video. So for Final Cut Pro users, if you want the best of the best, this is the card to get. With the later Radeon releases, the RX 6800 XT has also dropped a bit in price, so I can't really recommend anything lower than this card. I will say this though, that if you are a Mac user, please be careful and check compatibility before purchasing a Radeon graphics card for your Mac. 
All right, number four, if you're looking for a video card specifically designed for video editors and not gamers, you want the NVIDIA Quadro. NVIDIA doesn't just make GeForce graphics cards that are primarily designed for gamers. They also build video cards that are meant for 3D rendering, professional applications, and video editing. Now, don't get me wrong, 95% of all video editors absolutely do not need anything else other than a GeForce card. But if you're looking into stuff like 3D rendering and super important footage where driver and system stability is an absolute must for you, then go with the NVIDIA Quadro, in particular the NVIDIA Quadro RTX A4000 in my eyes is the best price performance of the Quadro line. It comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM memory and pretty low power consumption. It's super duper fast but also super duper energy efficient. This card in my eyes is really meant for pure video editing professionals that don't even want to touch gaming. But this is the best option in my eyes if you really want to go down that route. For the vast majority of people, this wouldn't be the right card for you to get, which leads us to number one. What if you want the perfect balance between price and performance? Let's say you don't really need the powerhouse RTX 4080, but at the same time, you want something a little bit more premium and faster than the GTX 1660 Super. I wanted to find that perfect card between price and performance, and I believe I found it. So can I get a big drum roll, please? The NVIDIA RTX 3060, in my eyes, is the perfect video card for 99% of video editors out there. In particular, I really love the RTX 3060 OC Edition by MSI that rocks 12 gigabytes of VRAM. I'll actually show you guys an actual unboxing of the unit at the end of the video because I actually bought one. The RTX 3060 is just such an amazing mid-range card that it will pretty much handle anything you throw at it, including 4K video. First of all, it's small enough that it fits easily in most people's PC case, and you probably don't need to upgrade your power supply. It offers amazing performance with moderate power consumption. The card is also super quiet, which you'll really appreciate if you're a YouTuber and shooting videos in the same room you're editing your videos on. Now, the RTX 3060 comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and enough CUDA cores that you can basically throw any content creation workload at it, and it will perform. With 12 gigabytes of VRAM, this will greatly speed up your video renders. And keep in mind, this is a sub $400 video card, which is amazing. If you are a special effects artist with a heavy content creation workload, or even if you want to shoot in 4K and playback live in color grade at the same time, the 3060 is the card for you. Now, some people will say that the RTX 3060 Ti would be their card of choice, as you don't really need that much VRAM and 8 gigabytes is enough, but I disagree. For the extra cost of the 3060 Ti versus the non-Ti, plus having 4 gigabytes less of VRAM is just not worth it in my eyes. The 3060 Ti only has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, and yeah, I know the speed of the RAM is faster than the speed of the RAM in the 3060 non-Ti version, but we are talking about content creation, not gaming, so I can't really recommend the Ti over the regular 3060 for content creators. The better H.264, 265 encoding, yes, there's still a big difference for video rendering, and the 12 gigabytes of RAM makes all the difference in the world when using applications such as DaVinci Resolve. Once again, my favorite version is the MSI Ventus 2X OC edition of the 3060. And now I'll show you guys a quick unboxing of me with this card. Hey guys, we're gonna do an unboxing of the MSI GeForce RTX 3060. This is the MSI brand, and this is the twin Ventus, the one with two fans. So we are gonna do an unboxing. I'll show you guys exactly what comes inside the box. All right, I'm gonna open up this bad boy over here. So let's take a look. So you got this nice foam cover over here and then you got nice MSI over here. And here is the actual graphics card. Okay, look at this. Wow, a beast from the east. Very nice, powerful, heavy uh, card looking just like this. I'm gonna open it up. It comes in this anti-static bag. I'm gonna show you guys how big it looks. It has the two fans. And look at that. Oh, what a beauty. Okay, look at that. This is the MSI GeForce RTX 3060. It looks freaking amazing. I'm gonna fit it into my case and let's take a look at how it fits into my case. All right, so it was a super easy installation into my case. Fits perfectly uh, into the PCI slot and just dump that in there, put on the power supply and Boom, there we go. So I got my GeForce RTX 3060 all set up, really simple to install, perfect and nice fit. So that's how easy it was and that's why I love the card. 
All right, to summarize this video, my number one choice for video editors and content creators in 2023 and beyond is to go with the 3060. This is still a beast of the card and you can use it for gaming as well on medium to high settings. There's ray tracing and it's still a great future-proof card. It's just such a versatile card. And the best thing about this card is the price. You're paying about 1.5 times more than the GTX 1660 Super, but you just get such a much more powerful card and long-term card that it's definitely worth the investment for me. Even if you're just beginning as a content creator doing stuff on like Filmora, at some point you're going to want to start upgrading your game and edit in 4K. So why not just future-proof yourself right away? I also don't feel like there is a need to buy anything more expensive than the 3060 right now for content creators. This is the perfect price performance video card. Save your money and focus on your content creation. To summarize, just remember that it used to be that video editing software relies solely on your computer's central processor unit CPU to process and export video but now the GPU plays a larger and larger role. So make sure you guys pick the right GPU for you in 2023 and beyond. I have links to all the cards that I talked about in the description below. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did to support me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.